And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather Show. We've got pretty low levels of solar activity, but the real story today is filament. So if you're not able to see them in that view, don't worry. We'll show you some detailed views of solar filaments. There's another 24-hour video from SDO, which is showing us it doesn't want to be left out of the eclipse game. A partial solar eclipse happening there at the SDO. You can see the moon there moving across the southwestern limb briefly. And let's talk about filaments. So sunspot number has dropped below 60. But there are a lot of plasma filaments pointed right at Earth. So did you know that you can actually view the gong data from HelioViewer? So there's the gong data. We show this regularly on the channel. And uh, it's that's, helium, that's hydrogen alpha. And so those dark features that you see there, those are plasma filaments. They're similar to prominences, although not hanging off the edge of the disk. So those plasma filaments can all become coronal mass ejections. And as you can see, there are no less than a dozen of them pointed right at Earth. Remember, folks, you don't need to see any sort of sunspots or solar flares to see coronal mass ejections. So a number of large plasma filaments there are pointed right toward Earth. And keep in mind, folks, those things are very bumpy. I mean, you're seeing a two-dimensional view there, so just be aware of that. Those could extend hundreds of thousands of kilometers toward Earth. So great view of filaments there from the gong data. One of the many features that you can put in your videos from helioviewer.org. Here we've added 211 angstroms just to show the extended corona. And coronal holes actually show up very well in the 211 angstroms. So once again, let's briefly step back. Plasma filaments, that is just the hydrogen alpha, that's uh, 6,000 and some angstroms. There's 211 plus 6,500 and some angstroms. Very large number of very large filaments pointed right at your doorstep. So and before we get to that, let's briefly take a look here. This this is a 48 hour video, 1700 angstroms. And again, sunspot number has dipped since yesterday. Sunspot number is quite low here, even lower than the April average, which is also quite low. Anyway, we've got this Iceland volcano is still erupting, but it looks like it's simmering down there. So the lava flows are slowing. There is still some lava splashing out of that cinder cone. At Sundnukar. Sundnukar. As new real estate's created there. And here's what else is erupting. Uh... Luatobe has been producing some dense ash plumes, also a Biko. 10,000 foot ash plume from a Biko, 15,000 foot ash plume from Semeru, Dakono exploding. Fernandina continuing to create a lava delta, basically a river of rock, making its way to the ocean. Also, Sancha Guido, Fuego, Nevado de Ruiz, and Sabancaya. Earthquake activity high as we've had two six plus magnitude quakes in the past 24 hours, including this 6.0 at Indonesia. That was early this morning at 2.52 universal time. South of Japan, there was a 5.0. And then the biggest quake of quite a while there, a 6.6 .6 at Indonesia. That was at 9.48 this morning. China had a 5.0 at 1407. 
those are the quakes of a five and greater magnitude. And the 10.7 centimeter radio flux now at 124 solar flux units. 124 is the radio flux. So there is the there is the one year graph of the radio flux represented by the black line courtesy of solon.info solon.info slash solar if you want to look at it yourself. Some geomagnetic unrest forecasted for basically right now. It looks like a weak coronal hole high speed stream is in the forecast. We do have a slightly elevated solar wind here, but it's barely anything to even note. So here's our Enlil spiral and both NOAA and the ESA are forecasting quite weak coronal hole wind streams there. So you won't see a major uptick. I doubt we'll get the geomagnetic unrest from it, although we have seen some changes to the solar wind magnetic field parameters, which we'll get to here in just a moment. So here's ESA's Enlil spiral. Let's blow that up. And ESA, they're expecting the solar wind density to make it up over 25 protons per cubic centimeter. So that density wave did not happen. Although we are seeing a slightly elevated solar wind velocity, which we'll get to. First Earth's magnetic moment from space for the past four hours. That's about 12 Earth diameters of magnetohydrodynamic pressure. The space weather modeling framework. So that's what's going on in the past four hours. Things are pretty calm, geomagnetically speaking. Next Earth magnetic moment from the ground level. It depicts magnetic flux density also for the past four hours. And again, things are quite calm. We'll let that one play through to show a full four hour run as it has refreshed. And folks, we don't edit the videos to get them onto your screen as quickly as possible. That's the thing with any sort of nature based reporting. It's expired by the time we say it. KP index is at two. That's an average of global geomagnetism. KP two is the current situation geomagnetically calm. So the ACE is showing over 400 kilometers a second for the solar wind velocity at about 430 kilometers per second. Solar wind density here only about three protons per cubic centimeter. And the discover here showing looks like a mild CME impact to me, but Pretty similar parameters there, 6.3 protons per cubic centimeter for the solar wind density, solar wind velocity here just under 450 kilometers per second. GOES magnetometers are next and they're smooth. What with no geomagnetic storm activity happening. That is what you would tend to expect, especially if you watch the channel regularly. Next magnetic sectors. Sup with magnetic sectors. Well, Earth remains in a North Pole magnetic sector. But it looks like that could end rapidly here as we've got some new South Pole oriented coronal holes apparently opening up. We see some polar fields showing up in the earthly sector. If, you don't, if it's not obvious there, here's the line of sight field plot. And you'll see some rapid changes happening in the southeast, which would be your lower left. And let's move to coronal holes. So there you can see South Pole oriented coronal holes here. It looks like they've won the magnetic battle there in the southeast. They've sort of reformed there after North Pole magnetism briefly took over. South Pole magnetism returned. Next are coronal holes brought to you by the Smash News Network, at least busted name and news. And that's a 24 hour video. And yeah, coronal holes, there you have them. Which brings us to sunspots. 
Again, sunspot number here now below 60. It's like 57, 58 sunspots, something like that, according to Rob, the Royal Observatory of Belgium. And the likelihood of a large solar flare not really so high. Quite low, as these sunspots are simple sunspots, as opposed to magnetically complex sunspots, which are known for being much more likely to produce large solar flares. So let's take a look at sunspots here from the perspective of Solar Dynamics Observatory. We do have one new sunspot there forming in the northeast. So right up here, at least one new sunspot there. Besides that, not a lot going on. A little bit of degradation in this very far north group up here as well. Energetic particles and flares are very low. So ghost proton flux there, no events in quite a while. And no major flares either, only a barely C-class intensification there. A C1 solar flare is the most significant increase in the X-ray flux density that we've seen for the past 24 hours. So let's take a look at SDO once again. Once again, SDO. There's 94 angstroms. And that C-class flare came from, I think it was in the northwest. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section. So a little bit of activity in the northeast and a little bit of activity in the northwest. Besides that, things are quite chill. However, there are some quite active regions on the far side, which should be rising in a couple of days. And let's take a brief look at a star chart. First, a solar system forecast. And happy new moon to all of you reverse werewolves out there. Are you a reverse werewolf? Do you sleep at nighttime and do active things in the daytime and be a useful member of society and not consume humans as food? That's good. Congratulations. You're a reverse werewolf. You stay in at new moon as opposed to coming out at full moon, staying up all night, and being a general ass. Here's our solar system forecast. That's where things will be in a week as we move from first to second quarter or something. So here's a star chart. And if you're up before dawn, you may see Venus. If you've got a very low horizon and low light pollution, you might see Mercury following the setting of the sun. That would probably be best done around equatorial regions, but there you go. That's what's going on over our head. That is courtesy of skyandtelescope.org. Our astronomy photo of the day is some lake in Quebec. And uh, yeah, some eclipse views happening there. As day turns to night. Wait for it. And there it is. So that's apod.nasa.gov. If you want to check it out yourself, it is uh, Lake Magog. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to press the like button. If you're new to the channel, press subscribe. Thanks to the Smash Team members, especially. And of course, please visit the links below the video. Hit us up on social media. Press the share button. And if this promotion has offended you, Make sure you leave us a comment and let us know how mad you are. Clear out your pent up frustrations by raging in the comments section. We encourage it here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. 
So there you go, coronal mass ejections. And there have been some. Are they earthly directed? Well, not really, no. They aren't. Here we'll show the C3 as well as the C2. And you'll probably come to the same conclusion that I did. Those don't look like earthly directed coronal mass ejections. Once again, if you disagree with this, make sure you let us know in the comment the extent to which you disagree. Let's briefly look at stereo A. Feel free to pause the video on this frame if you're not familiar with the, the, the locations of things like Bepi Colombo and Parker Solar Probe and the Solar Orbiter. Stereo A is shown there as a red dot. So there's Stereo A and its difference imagery. And no earthly directed CMEs as far as I can tell from the available data. So here comes some custom coronagraphs. And yeah, those are just not earthly directed events. Here we've added the gong hydrogen alpha imagery to the 304 angstroms SDO. And keep in mind some of the anomalies you're seeing there are clouds because the gong hydrogen alpha imagery is ground based. Yeah, that wavelength makes it all the way to the ground level. And there's the full zoom showing a great view of filaments as we transition to the filament section of the video. So let's do it. Filaments, they're important. And like I said, there are a lot on the Earth's side of the solar disk, no less than a dozen or so. Look at all those dark absorption features blocking the hydrogen alpha from making it to Earth. So yeah, that's a lot of filaments and those are large filaments. You could name your whole family depending on the size of your family after those filaments. Follow the hashtag name that filament as we've had some very interesting filament names some of which have caused geomagnetic storms in fact the strongest geomagnetic storm of solar cycle 25 was named after somebody you want to figure out who follow the hashtag name that filament over at x.com forward slash smash o mash so yeah that's what's been going on and here are the past couple of hours and a little CME happening right now as we create the video. It's somewhat on the far side and definitely off to the east, so definitely not earthly directed. And that is like a concentrated CME beam. Let's move on to bonus features. Satellite charging hazards, we do have some over the northern Indian Ocean. They are minor of the surface charging variety where low energy electrons build up on the outside of spacecraft. Little disparity there, and at around noon time for the GOES 18, represented by this red N, that is noon local time for the GOES 18, and just missing warning levels there. There's the one year graph to contextualize the electron flux. Once again, courtesy of Solon.info. Solon.info. There's the forecast model. That is NOAA's forecast for the relativistic electrons. And expecting a little minor dip there, I would tend to agree, especially considering NOAA's forecast of a minor geomagnetic event from a coronal hole high speed stream. Next, we'll show the layer where it's measured the F layer. It's the bridge between Earth and space. So there is the ionosound. Things are definitely not looking stormy in terms of geomagnetism. There's the anomaly in megahertz from a 30 day median. Again, fairly unremarkable there. 
Let's close out space weather with a couple more things and then move on to meteorology as there are some pretty nasty forecasts for Earth weather. So here's the WAM, the whole atmosphere model, the global ionosphere now cast. And we'll close out space weather with the latest high res images. And it looks to me like we're seeing further degradation in sunspots since yesterday. So sunspot number here expected to continue to dip unless some new groups rise or form. That looks like less sunspots than yesterday. And let's get to meteorology, starting with the warmest and coldest places in the world. Check it out. There's the coldest place in the world, and it's only autumn in Antarctica. However, there are areas that are over 86 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Yeah, 86.3 below zero, folks. That is on the cool side. Now, as far as the coldest places in the northern hemisphere, some cold places in Greenland and what is that? The northern Siberia, so not nearly as cold as Antarctica. And as far as the hottest spots, it's pretty hot in Mexico. It's pretty hot in West Africa. I think Mexico and South America might be the hottest places in the world. These are the surface winds of the east and the jet streams. Jet streams of the central world and the surface winds. Surface winds of the west and the jet streams. Now, we've paused this satellite image. Why? Because have you ever seen 2010 A Space Odyssey? Monoliths? Well, it looks like Earth has been invaded by monoliths. Now, whether or not they're full of stars, I'm not sure. But look at all those monoliths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, one dozen monoliths in that still frame at 1450 universal time. And they're fast movers, folks. They are fast movers. And of course, those are probably data transmission errors from the GO satellite. Look at all those monoliths. Dear God. Next, we'll take a brief look at snow, and there's quite a lot of snow, and there's quite a, there's it's gonna, it's gonna be an epic melt season once again, an epic melt season. Snow water equivalents are very very high, so if you're into whitewater rafting due to snow melt, uh, I think you'll be in for a treat in the coming month or so, because it is definitely quite a bit of snow water equivalent. Here's what I mean by that. So the snow extent is actually quite low. It's like a standard deviation below normal over a standard de well, yeah, over a standard deviation below normal for the snow extent. That's the two dimensional area that it covers. Just length length times width. The snow mass balance is about one standard deviation below normal. At least based on the 1982 to 2012 average, but the snow water equivalent is over one standard deviation above the 98 to 2011 average. So again, epic melt season coming. That's the Northern Hemisphere's snow scenario. Here is our weather.gov map. We've got some tornado watches there, it looks like, over parts of Texas and Louisiana. Flash flood warnings, tornado watches, and 
high wind, severe thunderstorm warnings, etc. If your location's lit, click your location on the map. Weather.gov, the homepage of the National Weather Service. Here come some forecasts. Pressure and precipitation is first. <coughs> so there's pressure and precipitation for the next 72 hours. As rain returns to the northeast. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, accumulated precipitation in inches. And once again, like we said yesterday, Arkansas, you're getting kaplastered with rain here. Uh, something like seven inches of rain, especially in the southeastern portion of the state. Arkansas, it's that's that's the forecast precipitation. Next temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. And here comes some rapid melt. Look at all that anomalously warm air showing up there in the west. Also, the northeast will be unseasonably warm. Only the southern central part of the country, the Gulf states, will be the primary cold regions over the next three days. That's a 72-hour GFS temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. Next, lightning. And so we had some severe thunder there over Texas. And we still do have some active cells there. in areas like Shreveport, Louisiana. Shreveport. Quite a bit of lightning there. Some severe thunderstorms. We'll close this video out with US Doppler radar, visible satellite, and water vapor. So some showers there over Montana and Idaho and also Washington. The main precipitation is around the Gulf states. There's our visible satellite. And there is the water vapor map showing you those huge pressure gradients there just making their way out of Texas now into Oklahoma and Arkansas as that dry massive air provides a little bit of an impulse on the back of that moisture. Here's recap. U.S. Doppler radar showing vertical motion in the air column from ground-based systems, space-based systems showing the visible imagery, space-based systems showing the moisture in the air, the water vapor map. And here's me closing out. And we'll be back again tomorrow, perhaps, God willing. But in the meantime, may that solar wind be at your back.